Greetings, friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sasovedich for the Bible News Prophecy Program. This past Monday, that would be July 11th, 2022, New York City Emergency Management Department released a 90-second public service announcement Monday, July 11th, featuring empty city streets and sirens going off in the background amid the rare event. So, there has been a nuclear attack. Don't ask me how or why, says a woman who is walking a deserted city street. Just know that the big one has hit. Okay, so what do we do? Now, the PCA department, they laid out three actions residents should take, with the first common sense measure being getting inside as quickly as possible. And no... Staying in the car is not an option, she says. You need to get into a building and move away from the windows. Once inside, New Yorkers are told to stay inside and shut every door and window. Have a basement? Head there, she says. If you don't have one, get as far into the middle of the building as possible. City residents who were outside at the time of a blast are advised to wash up as soon as possible. Remove and pack all outer clothing to keep radioactive dust or ash away from your body, the PCA advises. The final step is to follow media for more information and sign up for Notify New York City for official alerts and updates to know when it is safe to go back outside. All right, the woman says reassuringly, you've got this. An emergency management spokesman told the New York Post, told the Post, one of the one of their one of the media, told the Post one of the pillars of the department is to educate residents on natural and man-made hazards. Here is a quote from that person: the likelihood of a nuclear weapon incident occurring in or near New York City is very low. However, it is important. New Yorkers know how to take various steps to stay safe, the spokesperson said. The new PCA encourages New Yorkers to take key, simple steps in the event of such an incident. So, this was his statement. Actually, the probability of New York City getting hit by a nuclear bomb or other weapon of mass destruction is actually very high, we believe, on the Bible News Prophecy Program. As far as the PCA steps go, one source we checked stated that while the steps could possibly help those downwind of a nuclear attack, they were basically useless where a large nuclear bomb would hit. Now that being said, we need to caution you, dear listeners, that Bible prophecy warns that more wars and destruction are coming to the power with the strongest fortress. And that is mentioned in Daniel chapter 11 verse 39. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. And that looks to happen after there will be false declarations, like in First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3, and hopes for peace, like in Romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 18. Now, since the United States is the power with the strongest fortress in the 21st century, Daniel 11.39 is a prophecy related to the destruction, indeed, of the United States of America. Furthermore, in Leviticus chapter 26, we, regarding prophesied destruction, notice the following, Leviticus 26, verse 33. I'll scatter you among the nations and draw out a sword after you. Your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. And while God did allow the Assyrians to scatter the children of Israel back in Old Testament times, they did not then destroy their cities. Thus, the cities becoming waste, prophecy is still waiting to be fulfilled. This is expected to impact the descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh, basically the Anglo-Saxon nations. Nuclear and other high-tech weapons, as well as electromagnetic pulse bombs, are modern ways to make land desolate and cities waste. In the last century, in uh, just after the Second World War, there was a man called Herbert W. Armstrong. He was the pastor general of the Worldwide Church of God. 
And in 1948, he taught about what may happen at the beginning of the Great Tribulation and before Christ returns. The agreement he refers to at first may not be a public one. Anyway, there will be an agreement, he said, by which the police of the state will enforce Catholicism upon all citizens inside its jurisdiction. The description of this new superstate is found in Revelation 17, a union of ten nations in Europe. It is pictured as the beast, which even footnotes in the Catholic Douay Bible admit is the Roman Empire. Thus, once this empire is revived in Europe, the newborn military power will, without warning, destroy American and British cities overnight with atomic bombs, conquering our peoples, taking our survivors to Europe as their slaves. Now, this was written in December 1948, page 6. In the, uh, in a text entitled Now It Can Be Told the Plain, in the Plain Truth magazine, and the author again is Herbert W. Armstrong. Now, dear friends around the world, let us point, and let me point out that I believe it will be a changed version of Roman Catholicism that will be enforced. Well, anyway, while there may actually be even more modern weapons and used than atomic bombs, well, the late Herbert Armstrong specifically thought he felt that this attack would occur 30 days after the abomination of desolation taught about in Daniel 11:31, which is probably around 11, uh, which is probably around, and uh, Daniel 11:39. So he thought he thought that that would be uh, around that time when that abomination is set up in Jerusalem. And he says the indication is the armies of the beast of Revelation 17 entering Jerusalem. What is this abomination? This refers to Daniel 11.31 and Matthew 24, 4, uh, 24 verse 15. From this time, Daniel 12 verse 11 to Christ's coming will be 1,290 days. Now verse 12. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the 103,035 days. Never before have we understood these periods of 2060 and 2090 and 1335 days, but it seems evident now, he said, a blessing is pronounced on us, on God's church, who wait and endure until 1335 days, approximately 1335 days prior to the coming of Jesus Christ. We shall then be warned and re-aided to be taken to a place of refuge and safety from the Great Tribulation. Forty-five days later, the beast's armies will surround Jerusalem. Thirty days later, the Great Tribulation will probably start with a nuclear attack on London and Britain, and possibly the same day or immediately after on the United States and Canadian cities. The Great Tribulation, he wrote, we shall few, fully then realize is the time of Jacob's trouble, spoken of in Jeremiah 30 and verse 7. And Jacob's name was named on Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, in Genesis 48 and verse 16. At that time, a third of the people in our nations, he meant Anglo-Saxon nations, will die or shall have died by famine and disease epidemics. Another third will die of, will die of the war, our cities being destroyed, Ezekiel 6, 6, and the remaining third will be carried to the land of our enemies as slaves, Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 12. This was written again in the text entitled The Time We Are Now In, uh, and it was Pastor General's Report, Volume 1, number 15. It was written in November 20th, 1979 on page 2. Well, do any other verses in the Bible, dear friends, support the idea of something like a nuclear war? Well, the answer is resounding yes. Consider the following. The following being now uh, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 23. The whole land is brimstone, salt and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Admach and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. All nations would say, why has the Lord done so to this land? What does the heat of this great anger mean? Then people would say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. 
For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods that they did not know and that he had not given to them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against this land to bring on it every curse that is written in this book. And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, in wrath, and in great indignation, and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So this is from Deuteronomy 29, verse 23 through 29. The whole land being brimstone, salt and burning is consistent with a nuclear type of attack. If you turn to Isaiah chapter 9, see please verses 19 and 20. Through the, uh, through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land is burned up and the people shall be as fuel for the fire. No man shall spare his brother and he shall snatch on the right hand and he shall devour on the left hand and not be satisfied. Every man shall eat the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh shall devour Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh. Together shall be they against Judah. Well, you see, nuclear and certain other modern attacks, attacks they tend to burn land up. That's very clear. And that's something that is well known from our human history. Jesus said that the time was coming when there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened and no flesh, so nothing, no animal, no human, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. This is quoted from Matthew 24 and verse 21 and 22. So that is consistent with a nuclear war and probably something worse. However, Amidst all of this horror, the good news is that the good news of the kingdom of God is that Jesus Christ will return and put a stop to the type of nuclear devastation that happened in Nagasaki 73 years ago and the devastation that will happen during the Great Tribulation. Because it says in Matthew now 24 verse 29 and 30, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Also, if you take a look at Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Also you want, you may want to consider Revelation chapter 21. In Revelation chapter 21 and uh, Verse 1 and 4. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more, there was no more sea. And then it speaks about the, uh, coming restoration and the real true, uh, real true kingdom of God that was going to be coming on this earth. So you see Nagasaki and Hiroshima are reminders to the world about how devastating modern warfare can be and that humankind needs a better way. Indeed, all the real peace is coming after Jesus returns. And we have a booklet for you called The Gospel of the Kingdom of God. And you can find it for free online. The Great Tribulation and Destruction will come first. First, before the return of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, so be encouraged with all this devastation. Nevertheless, there will be an end. And for more information and analysis of the world events, please go to our website, www.biblenewsprophecy.net. My name is Alexander Sasavelich, and this is the Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye, friends.